All right, there's Coach Day. Looks like he's settled in, ready to go. We'll hop in. Hey, we'll go uh, 10 or so questions here. One question each. We'll give a start with Bill Rabinowitz and Clay Hall on deck. Go ahead, Bill. Hi, Ryan. Uh, could you just kind of describe what Thera Munford has meant to the program over, over his career and how well he's played this year? Uh, probably hard to do in this short of a time. Um, he's a Block O recipient, you know, Bill Willis Award winner, captain. And uh, he's, you know, he really helped us this offseason, this preseason with great leadership. When we had a young team that didn't have a lot of experience, he was a guy that decided to come back, um, you know, made the move to guard, which has been, you know, really good for him, just showing his versatility and, and certainly the feedback we've got is that uh, it's really improved his value because he can do multiple things. Um, his approach has been unbelievable. He's been, uh, you know, durable, somebody we can count on. And uh, it certainly as a person, you know, Ohio State is going to, uh, is going to miss him when he leaves. Thank you. Next up to Clay Hall and Austin Ward on deck. Clay. Hey, Ryan, uh, just curious, what is the deadline, the drop dead kind of deadline on a game plan each week? And was this week's game plan tougher to arrive at than other teams? Uh, I would say probably uh, there is no drop dead. Um, I would say uh, in the Rutgers game, we called the play that we hadn't practiced all week and it, uh, it worked. Uh, it was just the right thing at the right time, you know, and Sometimes you you add plays in late that you have uh, banked reps at uh, or you feel comfortable calling. Uh, then there's other things that need a lot of work during the week. And uh, so there's no real drop dead. However, typically what we want to do is we put our first and second down uh, game plan in on Tuesday, uh, third down red zone on Wednesday, and then we polish everything up on Thursday, walk through on Friday. And, uh, you know, we won't really add much, you know, after uh, – you know, after, you know, probably Wednesday, maybe we'll add a play on Thursday, but that's rare. Uh, we usually want to make sure that we get a bunch of reps and get efficient at it. Thanks. Yep. All right, next up is Austin Ward with Nathan Baird on deck. Austin. Ryan, I think you, you mentioned briefly during the radio show that uh, on some of the clips that you showed the offense that maybe two of them were play calls that you think you know, maybe were mistakes on your end. What's the value uh, from your perspective of, that uh, self accountability in front of the team for a coach to say, Hey, it's not all on you guys. Oh, I think it's very important. And uh, I, you know, there's always, no matter what game it is, you know, probably, you know, three to five calls that you wish you had back. You know, if you're, if you're into the 10 to 15, it's usually a bad day. Um, and so mm -hmm. it's, it's everybody across the board. And that's the one thing that, you know, I think that our offense feels is that we're all in this thing together, you know, whether it's, the wide receivers, the quarterback, the running back, the tight ends, the, the offensive line or the coaches, and that we have to solve it at the end of the day. And, and we're in this thing together. And, and I think that's important to see everybody in there together, working together, um, knowing that if I'm doing my part, then, then I'm accountable to the guy next to me. But all it takes is one guy to be off, and that includes the coach. So uh, we're all in this thing together, and I think that was the point of the meeting. Next up, Nathan Baird with Dan Hope on deck. Nathan. Hey, Ryan, uh, Dewan said yesterday that uh, you guys used Jack Sawyer this week to kind of uh, emulate George Kalafas a little bit in practice. Just what about Jack already at this stage do you feel can can do that, can kind of emulate that level of play, that kind of skill? And how did you feel like the tackles responded to that? I think that they realize this is a big challenge. Um, both JT and Jack um, are some of the younger guys that when we go ones versus twos, twos versus ones at the end of practice, uh, allow us an opportunity. They kind of fit the same body uh, makeup that Carl Loftus has. And so, um, you know, it, the, the, the combination of speed and power and quickness is, is pretty comparable. Um, but, you know, I would say that, that uh, you know, Carl Loftus is uh, probably the biggest challenge that these guys have had all year and probably one of the better defensive ends in the country. So, that, you know, they understand that going into the game and they're going to have to be uh, playing their best. Next up is Dan Hope with Brendan Gulick on deck. Dan. Hey, Ryan, you mentioned on the radio show that you guys would have uh, taken the ball to start last week's game so you'd have an extra possession with Steel Chambers. Would he have been in line to start at linebacker last week if he had been eligible to play in the first half? And is he in line to start this week? 
Uh, you know, I leave that up to, to Coach Washington, but um, he's playing at, at a starter level for sure. And, uh, you know, I'll leave it at that. And I, I think, uh, you know, he's he's playing as good as anybody else on our defense right now. Now he's got to continue that. And, you know, we're still going to play depth and a bunch of other guys are going to play. Uh, but, uh, you know, I, I just think when you look at the production, it's been significant. Brendan Gulick up and Tim May on deck. Brendan. Hey, Ryan, during the, the show, it sounded like you had made a comment about guys were taking things in practice a little bit more uh, seriously from the perspective that they wanted to, to be perfect on plays. They wanted to really nail certain plays. Um, I, I'm curious if there's one or two guys that have stood out to you this year that you've seen really grow as they've taken practice more and more seriously throughout the course of the season. I don't know if it's just one, one, one or two people, honestly. I wish I could say that. I, I think it's just across the board. Guys understand how important it is. And it's something I noticed this week is there was just a little bit of an urgency um, to, to get it right. Um, because, you know, when, when you uh, start to get a bunch of games under your belt, you realize, you know, I got two or three times to get this right in practice, the timing. And when you play against good defenses and good offenses, you, you have to be just right. And if you're a little bit off, the margin for error is tiny. And so that's what preparation is all about. I think our guys are starting to learn that a little bit more and uh, we can keep growing in that area. Uh, but the better we are in that area, I think the better we'll perform on Saturday. Next up is Tim May with Stephen Means on deck. Tim. Yeah, right. About this time of year, we hear, keep hearing the term trap games this, trap games that. Uh, do you believe in the term trap game? And uh, with as much emphasis as you put on this game, even last week's game, you know, it was a struggle, but you you warned everybody about it. Do you, do you sense this could be a trap game for your team or what have you sensed from them from a from a focus standpoint this week? Well, yeah, I, I think we're much more uh, rested than we were uh, last week going into that game. Uh, you know, trap game, uh, I, I think what it is is just bringing it every week and the ability to consistently bring it week in and week out after, you know, having emotional games, big games, big wins, you know, di different things that happen <clears throat> and playing against conference opponents, playing against nine conference opponents, playing yeah. against a non-conference with Oregon, that's 10 games where you cannot, you can't, you can't lay an egg. You can't have a bad day. And so uh, that's part of this process. And I think maybe coming off of last year, some guys who are coming into the program, who didn't play much last year. Now they're having to play a full season and, and not, not being able to take a week off, you know, in the NFL, when you play 16, 17 weeks, uh, you know, you, you can have three or four bad weeks. You can in college football. And when you're playing against this conference right now, that's very, very strong. Uh, that's the challenge. Can you bring it week in and week out? And so this is another good team, you know, uh, again, whether it was Purdue or Nebraska last week or Penn state the week before, you know, we've got to bring it and it can't be about our opponents. So uh, that, that, that has been brought up to him. We talked about that during the bye week. We knew what this run was going to be like, and here we are. And uh, we have to find ways to win. And, and uh, I, I do think we're more rested this week. And uh, we've had a good focus. But now, again, we got to bring it. Thanks, man. Yep. Up with Joey Kaufman on deck, Steve. Ryan, obviously, Travion has established himself as the lead back for you guys. But I mean, you said repeatedly that you'd like to see some other guys get involved there oh. with Master and mine being healthy. But is Evan Pryor – in the mix at all to possibly be that second guy for you guys? I don't know if about the second guy right now, but but he certainly is in the mix to get in the game. And uh, he's growing every day. He's getting better. He's practicing better. And he's got a very, very bright future here. You know, we think he can be a really good player. I've uh, been very impressed with things we've seen. So uh, he's got to be ready to play. All right, next up, our last two, Joey Kaufman with Steve Hellwagon on deck. Joey. Ryan, how has Garrett looked in, in practice this week after coming after coming off being out last week? Was that a good week of practice? Does he look like he is in a rust or? Uh, I mean, he's had a good week of practice, you know. Um, yeah, I mean, and we'll, we'll see how he does today. All right, and we'll wrap it up with Steve Hellwagon. Hey, Coach, I want to ask you about your defensive tackles. Uh, Haskell Garrett, a little bit limited here in recent weeks, and. Uh, Tyleek Williams seemed like we have not seen a whole lot out of him in recent weeks either after he kind of flashed for a few weeks there. Um, those two guys in particular, what's the, the prognosis looking like for them? Yeah, we're spoke, uh, we're expecting to have them. And, and uh, you know, they've, uh, you know, both had different things along the way the last couple of weeks that have kind of held them back a little bit, but, um, but we're expecting them to play this week. Good. Thank you. 
Thanks, and Coach. I think, Appreciate it. Yeah, and I think uh, Coach uh, Coach Holman's coming on right after right after this, and just wanted to wish him good luck against Niagara. And had a great win against Akron. They had a great crowd, so wish him luck again in his next game.